Hello and welcome to a book review by Warhammer40kbookreviews.com Today I'm taking a look at Gods of Mars by Graham McNeil, the last book in the Mechanicus trilogy. When I first started looking into the Mechanicus trilogy, I was very excited to jump in and start reading. My sense of excitement lasted all the way through the first book, Priests of Mars, which managed to present a captivating insight into the strange culture of the Mechanicus. Despite a few misgivings concerning uh, a few too many different story threads, I look forward into uh, jumping to the next book, Lords of Mars. Sadly, this book missed much of what made Priests of Mars great and expanded on its flaws. Therefore, it was with a certain sense of unease that I picked up Gods of Mars and set about finishing up the storyline about Archmage Kotor and his uh, fantastical expedition into the Great Unknown. The book opens by picking up right where we left off at the end of Lords of Mars, which had so many different cliffhangers that it was almost hard for me to remember why it is that uh, this and this situation was supposed to be particularly dramatic. The meeting with uh, the ancient Major Tillok and his uh, mythological relic of technology known as the Breath of the Gods unfolds in a manner much unplanned for by Kotov, and within a few chapters things rapidly escalate from really horribly bad to really really extremely not good at all, oh please throw I don't want to die. It's in uh, these first few chapters of Gods of Mars that I got some flashbacks to the excellent writing and pacing of the first book in the trilogy. With uh, the big confrontation with uh, Telak, uh, McNeil captures an excellent sense of drama and suspense that filled me with hope that the, the decidedly mediocre Lords of Mars was just a single blemish in a great trilogy. These hopes were quickly smashed as more and more of the many different side stories start to force their way into the narrative of the book, uh, cluttering up the pacing with uh, personal tales that feel very inconsequential to the main plot and which only made me want to skim the pages and get back to the main gory meat of the story. It doesn't help that many of these stories uh, and their characters end up fizzling out into obscurity and left me wondering why it was at all relevant in the first place to be introduced to them. Some of the main characters remain interesting to follow, uh, especially Archmatus Kotov himself as he struggles with the, the fate of his grand expedition. But it felt to me like many characters at this point in the trilogy have become rather one note and now serve more as an instrument to the plot than having their own personal development. I was particularly disappointed uh, in the way that the techno horror Galatea is wrapped up and had really looked forward to uh, him playing a larger part of the book, but perhaps that is uh, symptomatic of too many subplots and characters. It's almost inevitable that the one that you end up liking the most uh, does not get the narrative attention you think it deserves. There is uh, a lot more action in Gods of Mars than uh, in either of the two first books in the trilogy. And McNeil does a decent job of setting up some fierce and dramatic battles that I enjoyed reading. Ultimately though, I ended up feeling like some of the battles ended up taking too much space and didn't really have a solid payoff in the end. I really wish that I could have ended the Mechanicus trilogy on a positive note, and I certainly feel that Priest of Mars showed a lot of potential. In the end though, I came away from the whole thing feeling rather sad that uh, messy storyline uh, and messy storytelling cluttered what could have been a fascinating deep dive into a very interesting 40k faction. If you're already heavily invested in the Mechanicus trilogy and you're just dying to know how it all wraps up, then by all means go ahead and pick up Gods of Mars, but in any other case I can't really recommend it. I give Gods of Mars 2 out of 5 chainswords.